you and I have read this motion and you know how many times. Have we seen any evidence of you closing a factory? No. Let's go to page 7. Roman 1 at the top. <coughs> the accusation there is the conduct of one Franklin Mithika Linturi acting, quote unquote, on Rebotia, acting in his role as the cabinet secretary. Then they cite a decision by the High Court, Honorable Lady Justice Ongundi, of 30th November 2021. Were you the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture? Because the allegation is whatever you say to have done, you are doing it quote unquote, acting in your role as the Cabinet Secretary. Were you the Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture? as of the date of this judgment? No. It is said in that same allegation, sir, that the Honorable Lady Justice Ongundi ruled against you on these family, criminal, civil, and commercial dispute. Is that correct? No, it's not correct. Is this dispute, sir, one of those that were yesterday called love and affection disputes? This petition number E068, the subject of the ruling mentioned there. Unfortunately, it is. It is. And of course, we were told there were 32 others. Yes. What do you want to tell this tribunal about these 32 love and affection disputes? Chair, <coughs> uh, one thing is that uh, I have a conscience and of I'm always very truthful to my conscience, and that is why I mean full disclosure without being prompted. Even when I came before, when I went to before Committee of Parliament during my voting, because I had nothing to hide, and I wanted the country to understand, to know uh, Linturi and the kind of tribulations that he uh, had to undergo to get to that position or to get where we were at that time. So that in the future, even if they are brought out, then it's on record that I volunteer and that information because there was nothing to end, because there was a statement of fact that these cases were there. But most importantly, uh, uh, members of the committee, is that all these cases revolve around parties or around an individual that unfortunately uh, we are friends and uh, for whatever reason that may not even be very material to these proceedings uh, then that relationship could not uh, hold and uh, uh, out of our own volition decided to bring so many cases which I had to defend. And out of the few selected cases here, uh, there is none that I lost. There is even a very interesting case, which is also which, uh, which, uh, was mentioned, but whose uh, light we didn't, did not even send, which also very appears interesting. Interesting, and it was uh, case number 74, where I was even being sued to take responsibility of children who are not mine. So, all these cases revolve around that kind 
uh, of disagreement, and I would just uh, uh, the members of the committee want to uh, really allow me to state them as start because it has been a very painful experience. This one, when I start thinking about it, it makes me break. No, I'm a, a mere man is not allowed to break in public, honorable <laughs> Tony. Just tell the, just tell the committee. You mentioned tribulations you have undergone because of these personal disputes. Can you please shed more light on those tribulations? Who was the author of those tribulations? How long did they last? And what format did they take? Uh, members of the committee, uh, I think... Wanna see us be a bit louder? Just like you mentioned yesterday, uh, you know, we had a five-year or six-year running battles uh, with the former administration and especially people that were believed to belong to a certain uh, uh, side or to a certain team that uh, was in support of a presidential candidate. Remember, we were tagged as Tanga Tanga, and it appeared that I was one of them. And during this time, so many things were done to me because I was conned, I was talked to, I was intimidated and all sorts of tricks were used to coerce me not to believe in the candidature of, or in the person that I was supporting. And because these cases, or that was the, almost the beginning of these cases, that administration of the Linda Sten decided to take advantage of that situation and latched on them and I became a victim of serious persecution, including the interference, interfering uh, with, with even, you know, uh, business that really did not even concern us. It was not a very easy a period for me and I think it's also common in knowledge because I've been trained in the media forever and people do not care whether you have a child, internet does not forget. I was painted as a person, even a rape case was a choreographer and, uh, and, 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 and uh, let me finish uh, yeah, because it reminds me of those very bad memories. Because at the time it took the intervention of Parliament itself. Because I was arrested when we were seriously even debating very serious uh, bills in the Senate, and a decision was to be made, and numbers really counted. And, and to be arrested so that I did not participate, even vote for what was on the floor, and took the magnanimity of Parliament, of the Senate, to suspend the sittings of Parliament so that I would be produced before the Senate because of what was happening. Chair, I have members of this committee, that is just one of them. I mentioned it yesterday. And this has never happened in the history. In history, anywhere, I'm yet to find where you find those matters being conducted in public. There is a reason why they are never done, but these all these media stations here treat the country to a comment 
about a marriage and divorce that for a marriage that never existed. The judgments are here. It was all commended, it was all persecution. Members of the committee, I was kicked out because of the support of that administration from my own house, my own house, for six years. House and spent money to, to build, and I, I could not. People were given protection to occupy my house forcefully because I is nothing we could do. But the only mistake we had done was to support a candidate for president who was or did not find favor with that administration. So, members of the committee, when I look at this thing and the story, even after appearing before this committee and explaining myself, volunteering information, and you remember yesterday, uh, the mover of the motion who is here and the audacity to tell me, Ukiachwa Achika. I you know what that means, niachu niachike, but that should show you, chair and members of this committee, that this matter has not been that easy. I, I, I am not following up anything, but the question I'm asking myself, or any other man here, or any other good lind here, because today people have relationships. They may not work. To what extent can you completely push them. If the courts have determined these matters that are being canvassed here, or in support of this motion, the rulings and judgments are in my favor. And considering the nature of these cases, the evidence, some of them getting this type of evidence, must tell you, you really need to be close to someone who knows about these cases. So that becomes easy for you to look for any relevant material that can support you. So what I am saying, uh, Chair, is that it is unfortunate, but because these issues have been raised here, I have to really mention them. It will not be my wish, because maybe probably my children are watching the father there. And it is it's a very trying moment and some things we leave to God uh, because there is nothing much we can do but when we are, we are faced with such situations and because we must also clear ourselves we must speak on, on these matters. So that is what uh, and I just really respectively 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 support women. I am um, one because I have daughters. My mother herself, I think my mother is a woman who, is, who prays for me every time. I may not be a person who goes to church every time. But I think the strength that I have to face such situations are prayers from my mother. I, I have, were it not for my mother, I would not be here where I am. I have no reason to disrespect women. And probably those women that have interacted with me properly without really <coughs> uh, taking advantage of, uh, of me know the kind of a person who I am. Because I have never disrespected women. I really love women because I know this country can't be what it is without women. I am a believer in the empowerment of women at the personal level. Now, and if I to just so that we make progress, because it's easy to get stuck on this matter, tell the committee how it felt to be accused on TV headlines, newspaper headlines, falsely as a rapist. This is a brief answer. How did they feel as a father? as an honorable member of parliament to be subjected to 
TV, camera screens, newspaper headlines that you are a rapist? Chair, yeah. there, ca there cannot be any other uh, embarrassing situation like finding yourself Honorable on CS. TV. Honorable CS, uh, Senior Council, have a point of order? Or? Well, my lady, you have to guide us. The committee has to guide us to what extent we can be involved in matters of relationship of uh, the cabinet secretary with a specific woman or with women. Your Honor, it is my case. I told you yesterday, I have really refrained from engaging my senior on these interjections. It is my case. If I, the way I do it doesn't persuade the tribunal, if I'm delving on irrelevances, it is my risk. He's a learned counsel, very eminent learned counsel. He knows and he, he knows what he's doing is not right. Let me be protected to prosecute my case. If I fail, I have previously failed in many other cases. This will just be another one. Um, thank you, Council. Senior Council, you know very well that uh, the CS was, it is quite clear that under allegation number two, I believe, um, the Honorable Wamboka brought out that under his motion. And so when they are covering that, it is, I think, in response to that. Uh, again, you will get your time to re-examine the cross-examining. So just wait for your time to come so that you can uh, prosecute the matter further. But for the time being, let us progress so that we don't interfere. Thank you. Uh, and Honorable Lintori, let's keep the answers brief because, uh, like I said yesterday, Chair, I appreciate the difficulties of navigating this area. Honorable Lintori, how did they fail to be accused for five years non-stop? <laughs> of being a fraudster and a man who forges documents, obtains credit using stolen title deeds and all the other things listed in ground two. <coughs> the chairman, uh, you know, it's not the space that you really would want to find yourself in, but uh, it really takes you when you are accused of such. So the uh, the lowest levels in society. Chairman, and I say this because, just like I mentioned, we have children. We teach our children. We discuss sexuality. This is an era where there are diseases all over. And anybody that would imagine that they would do such things is someone that would have wished you death. You, you've mentioned diseases, Honorable Linturi. Please tell the committee how it felt to be portrayed for five years in a state-sponsored campaign in the media as a man who passes around venereal diseases. So those were some of the issues in these cases. <coughs> uh, and just like I said, it feels very, very bad. It is really, really painful. How did uh, it feel, Honorable Linturi, to be portrayed on newspapers, on TV stations, on radios for five years as a man walking around with fake academic papers? Uh, I also want to say it is very, very bad. It is wrong for anybody to do that. But uh, I am really to ask for prayers and God's intervention to give me the energy and the courage to shut down. Otherwise, and I also thank God because and the prayers because I never had the slightest of tack of pressure or any, any other kind of uh, disease because that would have brought me down. How did they feel in Tory for five years 
every possible opportunity on TV, on newspaper, whatever forum, being portrayed as a serial womanizer. Of course, it appears bad. Just for the record, Honorable Linturi, because we don't want to be seen to be trying to extract undeserved sympathy. Between you and the mover of this motion, who has introduced these love and affection cases to this committee? It, you have to answer on the mic. Between Sorry. you and the move of the motion, who has brought these issues of love and affection to the committee? Is it you or is it the mover? It is the mover. Honorable Linturi is still back on that campaign. You told this committee that various judges and magistrates ruled in your favor in all of those allegations. Correct or incorrect? It's correct. I had ruled in my favor. So my question, sir, <laughs> did you see the media cover your vindication by various judges and magistrates with the same level of excitement and exaggeration they had used to cover the allegation? I want to say no, and there is even a testimony in today's papers of what transpired yesterday. Honorable Linturi, while this motion was going on, the motion we are in, have you been subjected to any negative media publicity? Quite a lot. I request and that this time, Chair, we play video. I believe number what, Mawiro? Num it must be number three. The one, the, 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 the bulletin by citizen. So, Honorable Linturi, to the best of your knowledge, we can stop it there so that we save on time. When was this broadcast made, Honorable Linturi, to the best of your knowledge? Last week. I don't remember whether you said that this date. Uh, 
is uh, is last week either the Wednesday or Thursday there on the second on the second May. yes that is the day this motion was being canvassed before the house this broadcast says sir you have been arrested because of this matter now before the committee and you are undergoing interrogation at the DCI were you arrested? I was not I was not even someone there and the last time I went to DCI was those years that time Would I be right to say sir this is the biggest media house in Kenya? Yes Even the star carried an online article We'll come to the star, let's deal with this one for now. <laughs> but Linturi, what do you say of this campaign? You have just taken us through a five-year campaign of negative media publicity. What do you say of the fact that even when the matter is before this committee and parliament, the leading media house in the country is publishing fake news about you? It's part of the scheme. It's part of the scheme. Has this media house issued any retraction mm -hmm. now that it is common knowledge this was fake news? Not at all. Have they even apologized to you? No, no, no. no. We are still on these love and affection things. I request we play the next video, which is number four. <laughs> For me, it's going to be sabotage. Because if this farmer is not going to grow milk for the next eight years, for the next seven years, because of someone trying to get rich right now, putting some stone and a bit of and mold you there, that is required by the soil. So the President William Ruto showed if he can include it at all? For me, I think the President should lead from the front on this particular issue because fertilizer has been his, his uh, uh, running call and us within the uh, UDA and the Kenya and, and Kenya from the government have actually run behind because we have seen the fruits so we need to fire medical injury? We need to take action. Whatever action that is required of it. So honorable Inturi, who is the person speaking in that video? That's a member of Parliament for and who unfortunately was my friend. So, Honorable Linturi, is it coincidental this Honorable Member is making calls for your dismissal and when the motion arrives before the House, it has 32 cases she has filed against you and she has lost all of them. Is it a coincidence? No, it isn't. In fact, this is the move of the motion by proxy. She is the move of the motion yes. by proxy. But the Honorable Linturi, the presiding chair. Yes, Honorable TJ. You know, it is very difficult to wade in this area without getting scratched. Uh, but uh, uh, let me advise counsel that although these are facts and issue which you must uh, work around try to walk the thin uh, the thin balance uh, i'm glad you, 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 you are now with agree just one minute between casting up as persons on a member of parliament without a substantive motion and in proceedings such as this but still retaining your right to talk around these issues because uh, if you say two things one that there is it is a coincidence w would it be a coincidence that these things happen uh, around the same time when a member of parliament had said certain things yet it is the sponsor of the motion who has collected judgments judgments are public documents which the sponsor can collect without necessarily not the personal matters chair the 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 yeah. divorce courses and disputes are not public council allow yeah. so, honorable so, so, tj to conclude then you can so it in. is important um, in principle 
to protect a member of parliament like I. Uh, yet, of course, there are issues that you must uh, cover. So, Ebu, uh, try to walk that uh, very difficult balance so that we protect everybody here. I'm guiding, sir, like I say, the Honorable Member and I are, are lawyers and is my senior, and as you have seen, we agree on many things, and I entirely agree with them even on this. I only request that, uh, you know, yesterday we invited the mover to consider dropping this allegation so that we don't have to be in this unfortunate territory. So I'm not walking a very tight <laughs> I must deal with the allegations in the motion and here yeah, there are natural limits of course on how much as passion we can cast on the Honourable Member for all day. But I'm guided, so let's proceed the Honourable Linturi. Council, um, Honourable Omanyo, you can say something? Uh, just watched my colleague on the screen and uh, the advocate uh, has been almost convincing me that putting people in the media like that, it's now he's doing the same to the same the other person. And the CS has said he respects women, he loves them. So why display her like that again on the screen? I'm confused. Honorable Chair, the answer, you can respond. the answer is simple. I have a client faced with the ground two of the motion that entirely revolves around matters of personal love and affection, which unfortunately, my client, if this motion is upheld by your committee, will not be eligible ever again in his life to hold a public office. And I have an accuser who bases their accusation on personal matters when they are mentioned as they must be unless the allegation is dropped that's what i said yesterday we can't eat our cake and have it for me i am happy if the mover is happy to withdraw this allegation i'll be happy to have everything about this personal matters expired but he can't have it both ways and I have a client to defend, I must do my job. I agree, of course, to the guidance by my senior Honorable Kajuan that there are limits. And I'm an Honorable Advocate Chair, I will abide by what are the natural limits that I cannot cross in dealing with this part of the problem. I too am a married man with a wife and children, so I appreciate and I'm 43 years old, so I know what lines I cannot cross in, the, in prosecuting this, but I must represent my client. Sure. Uh, Dr. Nyamai. Well, um, Chair, I know this is very sensitive and um, And Chair, again, I think we've run into the problem we had yesterday. Discovered during the interjection, the clock is not stopping. And I don't want to have again to come. Our, our team is a lot, and they're taking note of that. Yes. Well, um, Chair, the, these matters that are being raised here, unfortunately, they are there on accusation number or ground two in the motion and I must say that um, for all of us it's, it's very difficult to, to listen and uh, watch this I do not know whether we can request uh, the good lawyer not to over explain because the over explanation is also affecting your client we have been seated here watching, and uh, maybe you can, you can explain less. All those 32 issues, which you must find a way of navigating, I mean, for the purpose of uh, your client, I think it will be useful that uh, you just do not 
over explain that that would be my proposal chair so again i'm guided chair i have absolutely no problem with that guidance thank you vice chair is wanted to say okay any other member no uh council it is quite clear that uh the process is sensitive and uh move uh, including your client as honorable member has said but we can't run away from it again because it is in the motion uh, but what we are saying is please take care of people's emotion while at the same time you will be able to bring out issues that matter and are relevant thank you i will ask only two more questions on this matter Honorable Linturi, all these so-called personal love and affection issues in Ground 2, did they happen before during your tenure as Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture? Before. To the best of your knowledge, sir, does Article 152 on removal of cabinet secretaries and their motion, such as the one before us, apply to events that took place before appointment? No. Last question on that area, Honorable Linturi. How many people in your estimation would survive removal from office if personal love and affection and broken relationships were the standard for removal from office? None at all. None. Including the none. None would survive. Let's go to allegation number three. Luckily, Chair, we have passed that difficult territory. That is on page 8, sir. You are accused of breaching the act. Can you see that allegation in paragraph 3a? It is said, sir, that the reason you are sought to be removed from office is that you are engaged in a public, operative word being public, a public spat with journalists. As the mover presented before this committee evidence of you being engaged, in a public spat with journalists? No, he hasn't. In the type of world we live in, Honorable Linturi, would it be difficult to prove, quote unquote, public spat with journalists? No. Because the journalists would have recorded it anyway. That's what they do for a living, right? Yeah. Yes. Has this committee been shown any recording of that public spot? No, we haven't seen any. But we are told the evidence of this is a press statement that was issued by Ms. Faith Odiambo, president of the Law Society. Has that person yes. shown any witness statement before this committee? She hasn't sworn in. Did she come to testify in support of this motion? No. But the Honorable Linturi again, on a typical day in Kenya, how many press statements are issued against his cabinet secretaries? So many. So how many cabinet secretaries will survive in office? If a press statement issued by whoever person would be the <coughs> truth 
for removing a cabinet secretary from office. No, 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 sir. Again, the same press statement mentioned the issue of fertilizers in ground 3B, rather than revoking licenses. Has any evidence been placed before? No. None. A number, rather, who were shown a number of letters yesterday. A number of letters authored by your permanent secretary. I request it be shown the letters, Honorable Chair. But I can put a question since he has had the chance. The Honorable Linturi. Does any of those letters by the permanent secretary indicate how you may conceivably have committed a gross violation of the constitution? No. Does any of those letters have any bearing on any of the three allegations before this committee? No. No. In fact, some of them tried to exonerate us or exonerate me from blame. In fact, some of them exonerate you. Yeah. So, Honorable Linturi, based on the text of those letters, the good thing with letters is they speak for themselves. Correct. Has any basis been laid for this committee to summon your permanent secretary on the inquiry before it, based on the text of those letters? No, not at all. Yesterday again, we were told many things, sir, about the Fertilizer Act. And I've just taken you to allegation number one, allegation number two, and allegation number three. Is there any allegation in this motion accusing you of the breach of the fertilizer at the Animal Food Stars Act or any other law? None at all. None at all. But as a matter of fact, the Honorable Linturi, are you guilty of failing to implement any provisions of that act? No. Would you tell this select committee uh, why that act has not been fully implemented? Uh, I want to say, first of all, by way of background, it's, a, it's quite an old act. I think it dates back in 1965, which was um, amended again in the year 2015 and uh, when it was amended introduced that aspect of a board and uh, for purposes of implementation this has been work in progress it's been a work in progress because <coughs> as a ministry we tasked uh, the director crops and director uh, veterinary services to in the meantime be dealing with the issue. A task force was, was formed, even in my absence, I was not the minister, but that is the record that we have. So, the, because there's a number of technical challenges that requires to be addressed, so the act does not say by when, but processes have started, have started. a task force was formed, it's coming up with a report, so I don't think it's uh, really fair to bring that issue for me even to comment about it when it's not part of the allegations or one of the allegations I'm facing before this committee. In fact, it's irrelevant to the proceedings. Yesterday, Honorable Linturi, whenever we asked the mover, he kept talking about perception and your character. Whenever we cornered him, there is no specific allegation. I don't 
don't know whether you're following my question, Mr. Witness. The move of this motion told the committee many times about your perception, your character, your reputation, therefore you should be removed from office. What do you have to say to that? I have also trying to look at the grounds for removal of office and the perception is not really one of the grounds that can form basis of removal of anyone from the office. Let's assume for a moment, Honorable Linturi, for argument's sake, that one can be removed from office because they have such a terrible reputation. We are just ask, asking for argument's sake. Assuming that why a ground, would it apply when that terrible reputation is a result of a five-year state-sponsored negative campaign against you? No, it can't be. When I you, you are a lawyer, or is it my assumption? I am. Under our legal system, to the best of your knowledge, are we allowed to judge people based on their reputation and character and how they are perceived? No. Let's come to the testimony of Titus Kiprotich. Did he say he had read or had not read the motion before the committee? Please answer on the mic. Did he said he had not read the motion. As a matter of fact, did he say he did not even know that the witness statement he wrote was to be used in these proceedings? He didn't. Yes, he did. So, Honorable Linturi, a witness is brought against you and his testimony is that he has not even read the allegations against you. What do you say to that? Uh, and without the, uh, really uh, trying to judge, uh, probably the 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 witness did not even, the, the witness himself and immediately didn't know even the contents of the motion did not honorable know. cs there is a member of parliament who wants to say something a member of this committee honorable Umanyo. i think we should be honest the witness said he did not come to impeach anyone but he only had evidence of fake fertilizer Those are not my notes, Honorable Chair, and maybe your answer can confirm because it's a matter of record. Yeah. Allow me to respond to Honorable Manyo. Honorable Manyo, as I said yesterday, what you, the information you have said, we are all aware. We are all witnesses. We heard what that individual witness said. So please sober up. I know you want to represent the people on the ground, but we are here as select committee. So take your role and listen. Thank you. Sir, one of the other testimony brought against you was by a Bannon Courier Wajiko. Did he or had not read the motion against you? He had not read. He had not read. This gentleman a fertilizer called Mavuno. To the best of your knowledge, 
Is that particular brand of fertilizer one of those that are at the inquiry? By this committee? No, no, no. So again, Linturi, you have a witness who came. He says he never read even the motion against you. And the fertilizer he is testifying about is not even one of those at the inquiry. What do you have to say to that? He never knew what he was coming here to do or what was uh, the contents of discussion by this committee. There was David Minor. This is the gentleman who allegedly got a report from Africa and censored. Did he say he had read or he had not read the motion against you? He had not read. So again, you are confronted by a witness who has not even read the allegations against you. But this gentleman was purporting to speak to some reports. Did he say he was the author or was not the author of those reports? He said he was not the author. This gentleman was called here supposedly as an expert on fertilizers. Was he able to present before this committee, to the best of your knowledge, any evidence that he is an expert on the chemical composition of fertilizer? He did not produce any. Okay, let's come to Sami Kiptum Brigand. I hope I'm not honorable to real mass massacring the name. Sami Kiptum Did he say he had read or had not read the motion against you? He had not read. So again, Honorable Linturi, we have a witness coming here to persuade the select committee should be dismissed from office, but he has not even read the allegations against you. What do you have to say to that? We can't take him to be serious. We can't take him to be serious. Did this witness have any certificate of electronic evidence to the None. best of your knowledge that would be valid? None. None. Heavy weather yesterday was made about the poor and the vulnerable. Honorable Linton, without trivializing the very unfortunate things that happened to some of our farmers, is the administration of justice supposed to be done based on economic or social status, or should the process be blind to status? It should be blind to status. to the testimony of Osea Kipi. Yeah, I do not read. What do you have to say to that? that the witness called to prove the allegations against you is not even aware of what the allegations are. Probably may have been even been duped by the mover uh, to come here when uh, he really didn't know exactly what he was coming to do. So we can't take his evidence seriously. We can't take his evidence seriously. So, Honorable Linturi, we have uh, the move of the motion. 
he was unable to point a specific act or omission on your part. And every witness is called and not even read the allegations against you. What do you say to that? Of the committee, that's a clear demonstration of how trivial uh, is really meant this matter by calling people who never knew exactly what they were coming to answer to. And this can be demonstrated uh, by his absence in these proceedings today because, you know, the story that we had was about farmers' interests, the issues that uh, we all and to listen to is presenting the country. So how oh, is absence here in these proceedings also me from the opinion probably he was also not serious about this matter and must have been on a fishing expedition. Honorable Inturi, you have attached a number of documents to your affidavit and I want us to quickly run through them. <coughs> Let's go to document under flyer number two. Honorable This is a charge sheet. It's a charge sheet. Yes. Who is the accused person there? Is uh, Christine Nyambura Moturi. Do you know that person? Uh, I know this person to be one of the wives of uh, of Mashimua Wamboka who was married on the 15th of May 2023 in the United States in Arizona and they have two children that are surviving and what is she accused of? Cheating is cheating contrary to section 315 of the penal code. So, the Honorable Inturi, what do you have to say about this grad studying accuser of yours and the fact that in his own nuclear family there are accusations of this type? Chair, chair. Uh, Honorable TJ, Councillor, what are you leading to uh, in the, your line of questioning that, that specific area? What are you Honorable leading? Chair, the, the move of this motion has taken the posture of a gentleman who cares about our society, the public interest, the vulnerable, he's public spirited, he's a bona fide man acting in good faith. Clearly, it must say something if he can't do charity at home. I'm trying to build basically the case which I'm allowed at the law to discredit the character of my client's accuser. But I, more I, importantly, I get you, I get you, Chair. Just, just leave it there. My, I haven't no, finished, so no, there no, is no, another I, reason. No, just a minute. Yes. You know, when we subject issues in public glare, the more we speak about them, the more we accentuate the defamation they are in. In fact, just as the chair had guided you, you may think that you are vindicating and exonerating your client, but the more you project and trumpet them, the more you increase the readership, the audience, which therefore 
you know, just different. Again, I'm guided and share, like but I said, that was no, a the issue, the I issue, to skip senior, I'm guided. No, the issue I want to uh, drive at here, the charge sheet you have shown us is just a charge sheet. You know that uh, there must be a conviction to carry the issues that you're talking about. And so if you don't have uh, a conviction, uh, would you be persuaded to leave that uh, type of, uh, of questioning for another day until there yeah, is... Yeah, uh, I'm guided, so we don't need to spend more time on it. Uh, uh, or just to say I will not And accusation people. over accusation does not make anything right, you know? It really does. Honorable Linturi, let's go to the document at page 49 of your bundle. 49 years. Yes. What is that document, sir? The Organization of Structures and Produce Board. Does the organization know? Structure. Of what? NCPB. Is that the agency that was procuring the fertilizers in question? Yes. From that organizational structure, has the cabinet secretary been assigned any powers with regard to public procurement at NCPB? No. Let's go to the procurement department under that organizational structure at page 55 of the Badu, who is indicated as the topmost person on matters to do with procurement at the National Cereals and Produce Board. As a manager of procurement. Who is below them? The deputy manager. And there are, of course, several other people below them. Yes. Is the cabinet secretary indicated there as one of the people who have any duty or role or power on matters to do with procurement at NCPB? No. Let's go to page 63, sir. What is that document? Is the uh, application or invitation for tender mm -hmm. an advertisement to supply fertilizer? Who has issued that advert in the middle? The managing director, National Institution and Produce Board. The managing director? Yeah. Are you the managing director of NCPB? No. Okay. Let's go to page 64. What is that document, sir? <laughs> It's a clarification of the advert. It's a For clarification of the advert. Who has signed it at page 65? The managing director. For managing director, I signed for the managing director. Is this your signature? No. <coughs> but back to page 64. Can you read for the select committee the words that are highlighted there? Kindly note that the specifications published in the tender document was indicative. You are required to provide your specifications as per your formulation in line with the CAPS standards upon which evaluation shall be based from both planting and top dressing fertilizers. So the request was for fertilizer that complies with CAPS standards? Yes. Is that consistent with the accusation repeated 10 times in the motion? It is not. That there was fake. approval for procurement of fake fertilizer. Is it consistent yes, or inconsistent? No. Inconsistent. Let's go to document number three. What is that document, sir? Uh, this is a again, decision of the Public Procurement and Administrative Review Board. That is the court or tribunal mm. that determines procurement disputes, isn't it? Yes. And who are the parties? 
Aeon Kenya Insurance Brokers and Teacher Service Commission. Now I want us to go to one of the issues this tribunal resolved in that matter. When is the date of this decision? It must be it must, the date is on page 105. Uh, 20th February 2015. It's like nine years ago, right? Yes, yes, yes. So the matter we are discussing was settled nine years ago. Correct or incorrect? Correct. Now let's go to page 94. Please read to the tribunal the parts of that decision that are highlighted, that is relevant to the inquiry before us. The board therefore accepts the applicant's submission that the commissioner or any other officer or employee of the Chair Service Commission were strangers to the procurement proceedings and their decision to terminate the award of the tender meant in favor of the applicant was therefore unlawful. Under the provisions of Section 26 of Section 4 of the Act, every procuring entity is required by law to establish a procuring unit, attend evaluation stroke processing team, the tender committee and such other bodies as are required by the regulations for the purposes of making decisions on behalf of the public entity as are specified in the Act and the regulations. Once such bodies have been established, it is only the said bodies which are empowered to undertake any tender process to the, ex to the exclusion of everybody else. Does this decision confirm the part 5 we read on segregation of responsibilities and structured corporate decision-making systems? It does. Let us go to your document number four, sir. What is that document? This is a survey report by the Central Bank of Kenya on the performance of the agriculture sector up to March 2024. Is the Central Bank of Kenya a semi-autonomous agency? It is. Under which ministry does it fall? Finance. It falls under the Ministry of Finance. Would I be right, therefore, to say you have no capacity to influence reports of this agency in your capacity as Cabinet Secretary for Agriculture? You are right. Would you call this agency of the Republic of Kenya a respected or a non-respected public agency? Very respected. Very highly respected. Would I be right, sir, to say this institution is respected not just locally but globally? Yes. Let's go to this report or survey report they wrote, page 110 of your bedroom. Can you read on the second column of page 110 the words that are highlighted? In this regard, a, sh a large share of respondents cited the continued positive impact of pump price reduction by EPRA and the government subsidized fertilizer initiative. The proportion of respondents who reported to have accessed the subsidized fertilizer increased significantly in March 2024 relative to the January 2024 survey. Most farmers rely on rainfall agriculture and the uptake in fertilizer intake in March 24 was a strategy to capitalize on the March-May 24 long rain season. You know, Honorable Lintori, every weather has been made about poor vulnerable farmers and we are not trying to rubbish or in any way diminish the misfortune some farmers suffered. But isn't there also in this CBK report a positive story from the farmers? Yeah. Should this committee only consider 
the very unfortunate story which we acknowledge? Or should they also consider these positive stories recognized by none other than the Central Bank of the Republic of Kenya? They shouldn't. They shouldn't consider other both. stories both. Good. Let's go to page 111. Again, what does the Central Bank say? They have already revealed. It's highlighted there. Most respondents attributed the optimism, optimism to the recent appreciation of the Kenya shilling, which they expect to be sustained. Expectations that the subsidized fertilizer initiative would continue and that the March May 2024 long green season would be favorable. At page 106, what is the date of this report by CBK? March 2024. And on the motion before the assembly, rather before the committee, what is the date of the motion? Yeah, on what date was the notice of the motion before as given? 24th April. 24th April. Yes. So, it will follow, therefore, that this CBK report is much older than the motion before us. Correct. It must also, therefore, follow that this CBK report cannot have been authored with this motion in mind. It cannot. Let's go to page 115. <coughs> Several farmers indicated that proper timing in issuance of subsidized fertilizer and the quality of fertilizer assessed were important factors that support increased acreage. So again, without uh, trivializing the misfortune some farmers suffered, is this a positive or negative story? What you just read. Yes. Is it positive it or is negative? positive. Good. Let's go to page 117. Again, can you read the highlighted part, sir? Access to government subsidized fertilizer. The proportion of respondents who reported to have assessed government subsidized fertilizer increased substantially to 67% in March. 2024 from 53% in January 2024 survey. An increase of 67%. Yeah. Would that depict you as a successful cabinet secretary or the rogue cabinet secretary? The move of the motion would want the world to believe. From my judgment, uh, is a successful cabinet secretary. Actually, a very successful cabinet secretary. I was being modest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to one twenty-one, page 121 of this document. Again, what does the Central Bank of the Republic of Kenya say? Approximately 70% of sampled uh, farmers reported have benefited from the subsidized fertilizer, a key input in crop production. So again, does that depict you, sir, as the clown the media has painted for five years, or does it depict you as actually a competent and consummate cabinet secretary? A contrary to what the media has, or the or picture that the media has created over years, this depicts me as hand-working and competent cabinet secretary. As a matter of fact, Honorable Ndur, how are you ranked when you are MP for South Uganda? Uh, uh, I was ranked quite highly and uh, I think uh, the audit reports can really demonstrate that. And at no single time did I attract any audit query. At no single time 
did I not absorb my budget within the year? Let's go to page 131. What is this document and why have you placed it before the committee? This, uh, this is just to prove or to demonstrate to the committee that I've been a victim of an organized mal uh, campaign by the media and other financiers to malign my name and this is the story I mean reference to that was carried by the Star newspaper purporting that I uh, had been arrested together with my deputy uh, uh, with my permanent secretary. When did this happen, Honorable Lenturi? This is story. Uh, the, the exact date, this is last week, it's the same, the same last week, that's your find there about. It, it says in the caption there, <laughs> DPP orders the arrest of agriculture, CS Medical Injury, okay. uh, PS Porono, oh. of alleged fake fertilizer saga. Yes. To the best of your knowledge, has the DPP ever ordered your arrest or that of your peers? No. Has the star ever apologized to you or to the peers for this fake news? They have never. And at no time they have ever written a positive story about me. Again, is the star one of the big newspapers in this republic? Yes, it is. Let's go to the document at page 132. What is that document, sir? This is a decision of the Supreme Court of Kenya mm -hmm. on uh, the Michael movie, Mike movie, Sonko case. Yes. Now, I want you to take the committee to page 189 of the bed, paragraph 149 of that decision. Page 189, paragraph 149. Do I continue? Please read paragraph 149. As to the standard of proof in impeachment charges, the Court of Appeal, in its judgment in Martin Nyaga Wambora and three others versus the Speaker of the Senate and six others, Civil Appeal number 21 of 2014, found that to impeach a governor requires a high threshold, but that standard is neither beyond reasonable doubt nor on a balance of probability. Noting that the threshold for removal of a governor involves gross violation of the Constitution, we hold that the standard of proof required for removal of governor is above a balance of probability but below reasonable doubt. To the best of your knowledge, sir, would this standard of proof be met? When all the witnesses said they are not even aware what you are accused of. It will not be met. Would it be met when the mover had a cross-examination instead of pointing to the alleged approval, kept debating the motion? It will not be met. Okay, let's go to page 190. Next page. Injection by senior counsel. Yes, I will train myself to live from uh, objecting to anything. Partly because when I do object, you refer, you say to me that look, wait until you have time for cross examination. Do we stop the clock, Honorable Chief? Now, we have a witness. Counsel, counsel, senior counsel, counsel, I confirmed to you that our team is. Yes, on our that. the witness being asked about certain of proof. Should you really be asked? Is that not something my own friend can comment on when he's making submissions? Uh, Honorable Chair, again, I seek your protection. I have a job to do, and there is no rule I have breached. 
So let me just be allowed without interjection because I keep saying, you know, the Honorable Camino is almost my grandfather and I've really resisted having to have an altercation because in Meru where I come from, you don't have an altercation with your seniors, whether they are right or they are wrong. That's the rule in Meru. They are your seniors, they are your elders, but those elders have to also exercise restraint of some sort. But Chair, Council. Chair, uh, Presiding Chair. Honorable TJ. Uh, I think that is the precise reason why you should uh, accept wisdom from your grandfather uh, on issues of law. Uh, where, where he is not that my grandfather is a partisan player because he has a client he's representing and I represent the adversary. <coughs> if it were just an exchange between a grandfather and grandson, on this one, he is a partisan council, just like I'm partisan council. And that's why I'm saying, why can't I just be a... Yeah, yeah, but just listen children? to me. Uh, the wisdom from the, pat the patriarch uh, is that uh, you need not uh, cross-examine or lead evidence on opinion on law. Uh, because your client that is not here to lead uh, evidence on value judgment on law, we will see them in submissions, you will make submissions on them, and uh, whereas it is very appropriate for you to bring them to our attention, we are also we also want to save time. And so things which will come before us as submissions and uh, uh, judgments which we can make decisions on, you probably can save time. I think that's Fair the wisdom, enough, yeah. like that's the wisdom say, from, from, from the old man. Today I'm not in any quarrelsome mood and uh, like I have told you, I also always usually agree with my senior on the other side, so let's move on. Chair, uh, uh, <coughs> if you allow me, yesterday, not in Mondeos other than the Vice Chair, did mention that this matter is more of a political process. And being or having been in politics for some time and being trained in the public court, and there is also need, and that is why these proceedings are not in camera, for me to also get that opportunity when an, oppo uh, an opportunity arises to respond to the story that the public has been given. And it is true, whatever happened here yesterday was clearly playing to the gallery, without that in my opportunity to explain to the public. I think prejudice is me when it comes to issues of how we relate with my colleagues out there, with the public out there, because of was a name to protect. Council, proceed. Honorable Linturi, let's go to the document number 10 at page 252 of your budget. Please, can you explain to the Honorable Select Committee what this document is and why you are placed it before the committee? This is a letter addressed to me by the DCI in regard to a number of complaints that uh, they were investigating. Me difference was made in the motion in regard to my imminent arrest by DCI and this matter or this letter explains that the cases that were being referred to are cases that were investigated by the DCI. The referral was forwarded to the DPP and the DPP indirected that the files be closed and with no further action. And if, uh, for whatever word it is, one of these cases 
I was the complainant. And in that judge, Justice Ongundi, uh, judgment, if you go through it, one and how I ended up being uh, the victim. I was the complaint, I was the victim, but at the end of the day, I was one to be changed so that you understand what kind of games were there at that time. So, Honorable Linturi, we have a motion before this committee that says there are serious reasons for believing you have committed a crime. And we have a letter from DCI confirming that those matters were closed. What is your comment? Uh, <coughs> you know, that allegation should fall flat because the, uh, it's the, we, are, we, we have and demonstrated to the committee that he did what was sent in the motion is not correct. Let's go to the document number 11. What is that document? And why have you placed it before this honorable committee? Uh, this is a judgment of the court in my favor. Can and you read for us at page 261, the highlighted part? I think uh, uh, this is what uh, Justice Majanja said, that the first defendant's claim, counter, sorry, the first, the first defendant's counterclaim is allowed on terms that the judgment is entered for the first defendant against the plaintiff, second and, and for the defendant jointly and severally for the sum of 21,846,607 with interest at the court rates from the date of filing suit until payment in full. I am the first defendant in this matter. So, Honorable Lenturi, this judgment relates to one of the alleged acts of forgery and whatnot against you. And the judge ruled in your favor and even awarded you 21 million shillings. Did the media publicize this victory on your part, the way they have been publicizing the allegations against you? They have never. Good. Let's go to the document at page 263. Why have you placed it before this committee? Uh, this is a, uh, this is also a ruling in my favor uh, on a matter that revolves uh, the occupation and ownership of my house in Rwanda. Again, Honorable Linturi, five years of negative media publicity about that house, the court has ruled in your favor. Did the media publicize this victory on your part? They can't. So the, the public is still stuck with the image that there was a claim about your house, but they are never told the other side when you win. They are happy to do that. When we win, we have no access uh, uh, we are, uh, to publicity. And if there has to be there, then you must pay for it. Let's go to page 278. What is that document? This is also another, there's a joint, there's a, uh, an order from the Court of Appeal. How many judges of the Court of Appeal have made that order? There are, there are three. Three and judges Okwego. of the Court of Appeal issued an order in your favor? Yes. Did the media publicize this victory? They did part? not. So again, the public is left with the image of Linture, the bad guy. Never mind, the, the court of appeal has vindicated him. Yes. Public let's, is let's go to the document at page 287. What is it and why have you placed it here? <laughs> 
this is a, also another judgment from which court? From the Chief Magistrate's Court in Nairobi, and the judgment relates to the much publicized uh, divorce that uh, never was, and again the magistrate ruled in my favor, and the same was never told to the public. So again, the magistrate has ruled in your favor. The picture painted to the world for five years is of a rogue injury. Yes, and I, I wish today they are televising live, because this is the opportunity probably I may have. Let's go to page 306. What is that document? <laughs> The issue we have here is of fake fertilizer. We are spending a lot of time on love matters. We are spending a lot of time on media. Can you give some guidance here? Of how Honorable Chair Levin, we withdraw ground number two. Our work will be very easy. Take it and it will do it. Chair. Uh, thank Chair. you. Uh, Honorable Malulu. Yeah. I would like you to restrain our senior counsel because they are the, they are the ones who raised these issues. You can see even the client is pleading that he should also have time for this to be clarified because yesterday when they were prosecuting this, it was also on the media, live. So when it comes to him now responding, why, is, why does he want him not to respond? Okay, you have made your point, declare. Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Jane, then Chair. Honorable Omanyo. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I think it is very unfortunate that the presenter of the motion or the mover of the motion invited us to listen to this kind of information. And you see, it is common knowledge that the issue at hand is the issue of fake fertilizer and the nexus between the fake fertilizer and the CS. But unfortunately, we were presented with a motion that is laced with information on past love affairs and other matters. And as unfortunate as it is, we were invited to that information and unfortunately the parties have to deal with it. Thank you, Honorable Manyo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, although uh, we are listening to the CS side, the person being mentioned is not here to defend herself. That's why we are finding it difficult. We cannot listen to one side of the spectrum, and the other side of the spectrum is nowhere. So if we must dwell on this matter, and it's very important, then let Lady Honorable Mary and the ex of the CS come to defend herself. Otherwise, we are just listening to rhetorics. Thank you, Honorable Omanyo. You have made your point. Uh, Honorable. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. And unfortunately, what we are dealing with, as far as this testimony is concerned, are court cases. Those court cases were introduced by the mover of the motion. So surely the respondent has every right to comment on each of those cases. When the mover introduced the cases, sorry about that. Hey, don't, don't, don't say that. This is a serious matter. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Bedroom affairs. This is very serious. <laughs> this is bedroom affairs. <laughs> All right, I think the mic is um, loud enough and you don't have to see me anyway. Um, uh, Honorable Chairperson, the mover of the motion introduced the cases and the comments we are getting are in respect of each of the cases cited in the motion. So two things we have to say. Number one, the respondent surely has a right to respond to the cases that were put before us. That is number one. Number two, it is very important also to recast that it, where 
a witness is actually a lawyer or an advocate. Issues of law and opinion can actually be put to him because that is what our rules provide. So I do not think uh, we are the, the council is going out of um, out of the way to try and get these cases recited and commented on because they are part and parcel of the facts in the issue before us. Honorable Yusuf. Madam uh, Chair, I'm not a lawyer and I can't argue on the point of law. But if my mind serves me very well, yesterday we restrained Honorable Wamboga not to comment about this issue. It was a debate in this committee. I never wanted to argue about this issue. We want the member, the honorable members, yes, and his lawyer to restrain themselves on this issue. The way we have reprimanded yesterday, honorable Wabonga, Wamboka, to restrain himself. Thank you. Chair. Chair. Thank you. Uh, honorable Tandaza. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think the process was very clear that uh, the mover actually prosecuted this case based on what he had presented before this committee and before parliament. And the Mweshmiwa, uh, the CS, also put his replying affidavit in the same manner that he is holding and is being questioned or is being led through by his counsel. So I don't see anything wrong for as long as the counsel is taking him through his affidavits, which were filed and we have them, then he should rightly proceed unless he is asking questions beyond what is in those uh, replying affidavits. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I think members have made their points. Uh, Honorable Omanyo, you have uh, severally pleaded with us that we invite uh, Marianne, that we will deal with it at our own level later, uh, so that as a select committee, uh, then we can give you our response. The other thing is about the proceedings. Uh, yesterday, we did not stop the MUFA from presenting his case. And at one stage, the council here proposed that he withdraws so that we don't, you know, deliberate on this. I know some of us are real Africans, and discussing bedroom matters is not very pleasing. But we have been put in this situation by the MUFA and his council. Now that they did not withdraw, withdrew yesterday, we have no option but we have to wrestle with all this. And ours is just to say, just as we publicly heard the mover yesterday, they can also respond and the public can also hear their side. I don't, I don't know why we are being affected. Because if we were not affected yesterday when we heard all this news, we shouldn't be affected today when it is the second day and we are even used to now uh, the things that are happening. So I suggest that um, uh, we proceed for the next 20 minutes. At 1, we will break for lunch and then we will come back. Thank you. Much of lunch, yes. So Honorable Linturi, the document at page 306, why have you placed it before this committee? Uh, your uh, <coughs> chair and the committee have placed this document before the committee to demonstrate to the committee contrary to uh, uh, the assertion by the mover specifically under uh, this civil suit number E1 that the 8th of 2018 uh, I got favorable judgments from the uh, rulings from the court. So there is a favorable ruling from the court 
on the matters in ground two again in your favor. Correct. Was this favorable ruling on your part ever publicized, like the accusations against you had been? It was not, and I don't think it will ever be. It will never be. Mm. Let's go to the document at page 314. Why have you placed it before this Honorable Committee? This is also to demonstrate the same thing. Again, the court dedicated you. Was this publicized? The date headline news? It was not. It was not reported. Yeah. Let's go to the document at page 319. What is it and why have you placed it before the committee? I hope you know, Honorable Chair, I'm desisting from going into the details because I don't want this to... This is also a, another court order which, uh, uh, which was in my favor and which also was directing the police to give security to evict uh, the member from my house. Was this decision in your favor, given the publicity that for five years the world kept being told about the bad linturi? It was not. It was not publicized. And why have you placed the document at page 320 before the committee? There is also another document to prove to the committee. And despite her losing those cases, she went for appeal, and the appeal was also dismissed by so the court. So she lost? She appealed, but she still lost. Yes. Was that victory on your part, given the publicity to erase the image the world has been fed for years and years of Linturi the bad guy? It was never done, contrary to what had been published, published before, as a man who depends on a woman for livelihood. Always kept. Do you actually depend on women for livelihood, Honorable Interior? I maintain them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the document at page 337, sir. Yes, 337. 